What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Entitled Family Thinks They Can Have My Band Equipment. So this was an event that happened quite a bit of time ago, so some details may be blurry. Here's the cast, oh boy. Entitled mother. Entitled bad kid. Entitled kid. Entitled dad. Me, band kid one, band kid two. Band mom that was in the army. Band dad that was in the army. Where I live at, if you are in band, you will also be in marching band, unless you do a fall sport. So we have a large band. Despite having a large band, I hang around with two people. We are at BOA, or Bands of America, Indianapolis, and we happen to have just finished our show. After shows, we put props to the side to take pictures, and we have some band parents take the props to the Penske. After all pictures are done, we are off to the buses so we can put up our instruments and color guard equipment and get dressed in our street clothes. While we happen to get dressed, Entitled Mother and Entitled Band Kid happen to come across us. While we do get undressed, it's only the uniform. We wear some clothes under the uniform for situations like this. Entitled Band Kid notices the band getting undressed and runs towards me. Bob, this is the uniform I want. Take it from him. I hear this and my immediate thought is to be ready for negotiation. Give me your uniform. I know it's being retired this year, so why trash it when a child can have it? Ma'am, I'm afraid I can't do that. I don't own this uniform and if they end up selling this uniform, it'll probably be after the Christmas parade in Columbus, Indiana. That's not how it works, sweetie. I know how your school handles old uniforms. Ma'am, I said I can't sell it. If you want to try to barter and get a uniform, you're gonna have to ask the band director because these haven't been retired yet. Why do you have two saxophones? That one is mine, I'd recognize it anywhere. For Bands of America, I bring two instruments. I bring my marching alto sax and my concert alto sax. During my freshman year, there were a few issues and I couldn't play for most of the show. Since then, I've always brought two to every show. That's my kid's saxophone, why are you stealing it? I can assure you there is a mistake being made. It's my concert horn. I brought a second saxophone with me in case the other one has some malfunctions. My marching alto is a Martin Handcraft. It isn't made anymore. These saxes are really good, but also require high maintenance. If I miss even tightening one screw or a spring and lose it, we'd have to find someone who can make custom screws and springs. My other alto is an Altura Paris, which I protect like it's my child. He has my horn, I want it back. Give me his sax, you know it's his, besides old, rusty, dusty, and broken doesn't appear to be broken, so why do you need it? Ma'am, back away. These horns are mine, I can guarantee I've never stolen a horn. For a musician, that's practically kidnapping it. I don't give a rat's ass, if you don't respectfully hand it over, I'll be forced to snag it from you. Q entitled dad coming from behind. The hell going on over here? That child has my sex and won't give it back. Entitled dad attempts to snatch it, but fails. Don't make me call the police on you, kid. I know more stronger people than your director. What's the fuss over here? That kid has my sex. You mean this horn? The one I bought for OP? Look, give us back our child's sex and we won't have any problems. I've told you. This is my horn. I won't be giving it to you. Entitled Dad goes to punch me so Entitled Band Kid could take the sax. I end up taking the hit, but I grab my sax while he does it. What the frick is your problem, you ass town? Entitled Band Dad ends up swinging a punch at Army Band Dad and ends up missing. Army Band Dad then takes the chance to knock him down and does. I then headed off to the transport to put my marching sacks on the transport and I keep the concert sacks on me. We then went to the mall to eat and look around. Surprise, surprise, the entitled family happens to be with our band. As mentioned, I have my concert sacks on me. It's been stolen from a band locker and if I can't trust it in a band locker, I can't trust leaving it anywhere. It's a kid again! Head over the horn now or I'll get the police involved. See if I care if you get the police in on this. It's my horn. I have nothing to hide. Get them now. Entitled Band Kid and Entitled Kid tried to fight me for my horn. Before they swung, I handed it to Band Kid 1 and told Band Kid 2 to call the authorities. We don't have to fight. This is a misunderstanding. I don't have your saxophone. If you don't give it to me, I will fight. It's my horn. I deserve it. 
I don't want to fight. Just find someone else to bother. I'm not changing my position. Entitled Bandad was behind me watching the entire event happen, and after his gremlin swung, he came over behind me and swung as hard as he could at the back of my head. I ended up getting hit again from him, but at this point I'm done. Step off. All three of you. I don't have your horn. I don't want to fight. If I have to, I will. Where's that army parrot now, OP? None of your concern. Now back off. Entitled Band Kid swung at me, but I ended up ducking and headbutting him. Entitled Kid ran off to get someone to help his brother. Entitled Band Dad ended up hitting me a few more times, but Army Band Mom ended up arriving. Back away from my child, sir. I will not repeat my statement. If I don't? I will do what it takes to free this kid from you. At this point, I was getting up so I could find Band Kid 1 and 2, but authorities arrived. They ended up arresting the dad and mom and put the kid in care of the aunt. It wasn't a great day, but I ended up protecting my saxes, so I'm fine with the hits. Ha! <sighs> um, headbutting is not a move you want to go for because it hurts a lot. Punching someone hurts a lot. Okay, all these people talk so nonchalantly about getting into fights, but they hurt, okay? Getting hit hurts, hitting someone with your full strength hurts. Uh, it, it's not... <laughs> headbutting someone, <laughs> especially as a kid, that's gonna hurt a lot, man. This story's called, Entitled Dad Tries to Make His Own Laws on Government Property. This happened a couple of years ago, when I worked at a U.S. national park as a bartender at one of the more upscale lodges. If you're not aware, national parks have concession contracts that allows companies to provide services through restaurants, lodges, gift shops, and tours, etc. The company facilities on property are inspected and overseen by National Park Service rangers regularly and act as overall judicial force if any crimes or violations are reported. As a bartender at a park, my training was overseen by National Park Service and state officials along with my company management. Since it's government property, we can't get away with free pouring, no comped alcoholic beverages, payment is required before drinks are made, and we are obligated to log every ID that we check, anyone who appears under the age of 30. As someone who very much likes my position, I follow the rules no matter how annoyed a guest becomes. I'm starting my shift and business is calm at the cocktail lounge. I'm cleaning off the bar top as a family of four walk in and snag a six-top table by the window. It's a beautiful view, so it's not uncommon. There's Entitled Dad, Mom, and their two sons, obviously aged below 16. Due to a rule that I have no control over, as long as a parent is present at a table with a minor, they're allowed to stay. I go to greet the group before taking their order. Before I can even get my name out, the Entitled Dad interrupts me and says with a very heavy southern drawl that his family will have four of our special of the day, which is an alcoholic hot drink. I say I can definitely get two of those drinks sorted, but I'll need to see ID for the two boys. No, oh, no, I'm their guardian, so it's okay. They can drink with me. I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot let a minor drink alcohol in this establishment. A valid ID is a requirement. Excuse me? I'm their father, and where we're from, that's enough. Now go get our drinks. I don't take mistreatment from guests, so I decide to ignore the man and speak to his sons directly. Now, uh, would you boys like a regular hot chocolate, mocktail, or soft drink? The boys seem a bit timid, but they tell me they'd like to have Shirley Temples. But of course, Entitled Dad has another idea up his sleeve. They'll actually have two hot chocolates. I notice another group is entering the lounge, so I confirm the order take his payment, he decides to use his room charge card, and head to the bar to make the order. I make two specials and two non-alcoholic chocolate drinks. I'm not a fool and I've seen some unique attempts from guests to get what they want. The specials are mixed with a cream liqueur, so they're obviously lighter than the Belgian hot chocolates the boys would be getting. But to add even further clarity, I chose to add brightly colored straws to the boys' drinks. I deliver the drinks and very clearly distinguish which ones are alcoholic. I leave the table and begin making other drink orders coming in. I look up to check my table and see the father swap his drink with his sons and then watch him encourage the boy to drink. At this point, I'm annoyed but not surprised. I added the straws in case this would happen. I approach the table and loudly remind Entitled Dad what I told him previously. Listen here, 
I didn't spend all this money on this trip so I couldn't drink with my boys. If you want any tip from me, you'll mind your damn business. I've had enough and have decided to exercise my authority as the bartender and let him know what is about to happen instead. Actually, no. This is a zero tolerance policy so I will be confiscating the alcoholic beverages from your table. And no, they will not be reimbursed. This is a formal cutoff for you. So, as policy states, I will now alert the other bars within this park and inform them that you have been cut off and they will now not serve you based on your description and your room information on the card that you provided for payment. My manager will be here momentarily to add any further clarification that you may need. Now, this may sound like a very rude reaction from me, but it is company policy that is enforced through National Park Service. To discourage over-serving and drunk driving when a bartender or server has decided to cut off anyone from drinks, no one is legally allowed to override this decision. This is because the server and bartender are held liable for any damages or injuries. This policy became even more enforced when a couple was overserved and ended up falling from a cliff and died. So yeah, it's useful. The story ends with my manager having to call National Park Service to escort the entitled dad off the property when he became violent. The mom and boys were visibly embarrassed and very apologetic, so I decided to give them a comped meal by the fireplace as a way to make up for having to deal with such a crappy dad in their lives. She left me a massive tip, which was unnecessary, but I was grateful for it. That was a very admirable ending, you know, comping the, the family's meal. Because yeah, the dad was acting very out of line there and unreasonably, but the, yeah, the family didn't do anything. I, I really actually respect that a ton, holy crap. But yes, obey your drinking laws. They may seem unjust some places, but like in Texas, for instance, you can drink alcohol at like any age as long as your parents are cool with it. And I'm pretty sure if you're home, I think you have to be at home, but if your parents are okay with it for the most part, you're allowed to drink. This story is called, Does This Bus Go Into The Hospital? This happened a few years ago. I was waiting for the bus to go visit a friend at the local university. The university is right next to a hospital. I had my headphones on and didn't notice Entitled Mother walk up with her kids until she tapped me on the shoulder. Excuse me, does this bus go into the hospital? Basically more annoyed than polite. I pull off my headphones. Um, sorry? I heard her, but it's just my normal reaction. <sighs> does this bus go into the hospital? Um, uh, yes, I do believe it does. I think it goes through the university, then to the hospital. Oh, okay, good. She turns back to her kids without a thank you. But whatever, I've ridden the bus for years. I'm used to rude people. I put my headphones back on and waited for the bus. The bus pulls up a few minutes later and it says in big letters on the front, number one, to the hospital. I figured Entitled Mother would definitely know this was the right bus. We get in line and she was about three people back from me. I'm usually polite and let the elderly or mothers go on ahead. But it was super, but it was super busy so we all kind of just swarmed it. I got on and sat in the single seat right behind the driver. I like this seat because it's up a step and away from everyone. It kind of like they were like, you know what, I can fit an extra seat here. So they did. Entitled mother gets on and before paying, she asked the bus driver, does this bus go into the hospital? Again, not even a hint of politeness. Um, no ma'am. She shoots me daggers like it was somehow my fault. He told me you did. Uh, well, ma'am, if I drove into the hospital, they probably wouldn't like that, and I could potentially hurt a bunch of people. I do, however, pull up right in front of the hospital, though. Everyone within earshot started dying, myself included. Entitled Mother was having none of it, though. She huffed and paid her fare, then brought her kids to the back. I thanked the bus driver as I left. I'm Canadian. But for the first time in a long while, I had actually meant it. Okay, I'm a little disappointed because that bus driver at least deserved a solid high five. That was, that was good stuff. This story's called, Entitled Parent Fires My Mom for Being Married to My Stepdad. Background. Me and my family had been recently kicked out of our old house and had to move out of my town. I was in the fifth grade at the time, so I can't remember everything, but I'll try my best. Story. 
We had just moved into my new house and settled in, when an accident with my stepdad happened. My stepdad was on a tank. I don't know what they're called, but it is used on the rigs. When something that wasn't supposed to go in it, went in it and caused the tank to catch fire. They said explode, but he would be dead if so. He is slowly losing his eyesight, and he can't do things that involve him being up high, as he will black out. While he was healing, my mom needed to get a job, and one of my neighbors gave her one, entitled Parent. Our neighbor was nice, at least for the time being, and offered to help us any time we needed it. Since my mom worked for Entitled Parent, and she was our neighbor, they became friends and we hung out with her, her husband, and her kids from time to time. Then one day, Entitled Parent called my mom crying, saying my stepdad was harassing me and insulted me, and just saying all these things to my mom. Entitled Parent had caused a fight because this had happened before with other women. He had done this so much that I could tell when he was lying and would tell my mom if he was or not. So I told my mom, after they were done, that he wasn't lying. Of course, me being 11, she didn't believe me. She went and looked at his phone and apologized to him about it, but was furious about entitled parents lying to her. She tore her a new one. After that, we didn't talk to that family unless it was for work, which was cut off by entitled parent later on. Entitled parents stopped texting my mom about jobs and fired her for failure to show. My mom ended up having to find another job, but not before calling Entitled Parent's boss and telling them that Entitled Parent hadn't been texting her for work and sent them all the messages that they sent each other with a full month of days, my mom asking, do we have work today? And no reply from Entitled Parent. Entitled Parent got fired and all of my neighbors knew what she did. We had moved away from her and haven't seen her in a long time and hope never again. Thank you for reading, and I'm sorry if there isn't as much karma as there could have been. Okay, something we can all relate to is when you're a kid and you know something that your parents don't, or you're just trying to tell your parents something, but they don't take you seriously because you're a kid. Now, this, <laughs> this never changed for me. So, like, to my parents, I'm basically not past, like, age 10, even though I'm, like, 20, nearly 21 at this point. But, like, I will say this, if you have kids, no matter how young, try to take what they say at least a little seriously. Obviously, there are some caveats with that. <laughs> you can kind of tell when your kid is being ridiculous. Like, But then again, that is a slippery slope to make judgments like that. So yes, always take your children seriously. Always listen to what they have to say and at least try to give it some mind, you know, so they don't feel they don't grow up with lack of confidence in what they say. They have an inferiority complex or I, I'm not saying that stuff is me, but I'm just saying that's a risk. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.